do you guys have sperm on the menu now? We do. So what do you, how do you serve it? Raw. <laughs> Raw dog. Raw dog sperm <laughs> serving. My name is Matt Orlando. I am the head chef and owner of a mass restaurant in Copenhagen. We uh, opened the restaurant nine months ago now, out in an old shipyard just outside of central Copenhagen. Some people say it's a ways from the center of the city. I say you're lazy. <laughs> it's a 15-minute bike ride out here. Or you can take the water taxi, which stops right in front of the restaurant. Or you can take the bus, if you're not too proud. So for me, the produce in Denmark is a big reason why I chose to stay in Denmark. The season is very short, but what grows in that season is amazing. Some of the best vegetables I've had anywhere I've traveled. We make phone calls to the purveyors and mostly to our farmers the week before, talking to them about what's coming up next, what's coming up next, and then base our menus on what they tell us as opposed to us telling them what we want. One of our farmers has five kilos of the most amazing carrots you've ever seen, but all they have is five kilos. No one else is gonna take five kilos because it's not enough to run on a menu for an extended amount of time. We'll take five kilos and run it for one night, if that's all it, and then change the dish the next day. Normally, beef is not something that I would strive to put on the menu um, until I found this beef. It's come from Schackenborg, which is one of Prince Joachim's estates. This is the actual, the cap, and this one was cooked 61 degrees, 36 hours. Because the meat is already cooked, and you're just trying to get some color on it and some flavor, so this is a mixture of reduced carrot juice, reduced buttermilk, and then uh, brown butter for some a bit of depth behind it. This is a crumble that's made with uh, caramelized yogurt. This is the, the glazed carrots. We have uh, glazed and dried carrots. The sauce made with reduced buttermilk, carrot juice, and brown butter. Oh, wow. So this dish was really inspired by a good friend of mine from England. We, uh, my wife and I went to uh, London in January and we had dinner at Clove Club. Isaac uh, is a good friend of mine. And he served us a cake that was made with uh, peated barley. So barley that they sprout and then smoke and then usually that's what they used to make whiskey out of. And this flavor of the peated barley really kind of stuck with me. He gave me a little container to bring home. And uh, we really were talking about how do we, let, we need to use some dessert somehow. And Jens started making different ice creams out of it. Jens is one of the sous chefs. He is the ice cream mastermind. Peated barley ice cream. We have three different types of grains. We have uh, huff spelt, we have spelt flakes, barley flakes, and then dried lingon berries. We were really, we wanted to serve a, uh, some sort of caramel with this. And the one we went with was, uh, was Earl Grey tea caramel. So last night I was picked up by two friends. We went out for a night in the town. Dan is the head chef at Noma, who took over actually my position. And Magnus is a really good friend of mine. He's the head chef at Omens in Copenhagen. We started off the night with a few beers here and then uh, headed over to Broer. Uh, to meet up with Sam and Victor, who are the owners of Broer. Sam and Victor were sous chefs, were my sous chefs for me when I was at Noma as the head chef. Tonight we're going to serve some cool dishes. Yeah. Balls and head in particular. That's what he asked for. <laughs> These guys are doing nose to tail cooking like no other person. We took a shot of something. Are you running the show? No. I'm just working. <laughs> they present the lamb's head to you in the pot, and then they serve you whipped lamb's brains right after that. And then followed by fresh buckwheat pancakes with the meat picked off and uh, eyeballs stuffed with mushrooms. You know what? I had, when I first moved to Denmark, I had the most unbelievable conversation with a Dane about the word tortilla. Just tortilla or to tortilla. She said, how can five million people be wrong in calling it tortilla? As in the whole population of Denmark. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Bro was a bit heavier than I think we, we thought. Uh, James was pouring some pretty, I would say, alcoholic beers. 
eyeballs, cheeks, brains. That's what we ate last night. You can imagine the conversation uh, that goes around the table. Say goodbye to James for me. I will. He's trying to hide. I think he's camera shy. Your car, sir. And on our, on our right here, do you know what they call this club right here? This is their club. Chlamydia Castle. No way. Yeah. <laughs> you do? That, this is my that, hood, man. Uh, I live right here. So you're telling me you've never been to the fucking Chlamydia Castle even though you live right here. <laughs> it's actually the... I mean, late nights if you snuck out of the house. It's actually the only house. reason I chose this apartment. Because of the proximity. <laughs> <laughs> I can get away with it. That's it, very nice. I'm, I'm going to get some milk, babe. <laughs> I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> we somehow made our way up to Manfred's in Norbro. And Manfred's is actually quite close to my house, so I spent a lot of time there. Manfred's is, for me, one of the coolest spots in the city. Super chill, they play good music, they have an amazing wine list, and Christian is a good friend of mine. Christian and I worked together at Noma back in the day. Yeah, Manfred's uh, uh, is luckily for our own benefit is doing some different hours than most other ambitious restaurants. So uh, on Sundays it is uh, super packed with industry people. Their tartare has become a classic amongst the city. Everyone knows of the tartare from Manfred's. The tartare is a bit fun because it's uh, it's our emblematic dish at uh, Manfred's. Even though it's a very vegetable-based restaurant, the meat dish is uh, is uh, what all the focus is on. Yeah. That's delicious. Never, that never gets old. Never. I've eaten this maybe, I would say, a conservative estimate of 23 times. Oh, yeah. McKellar is usually where you start because if you go to McKellar towards the latter part of the evening, then you go to the dark side. And basically, that's our only that's our only option right now is to go to the dark side. I believe we also left with beers in hand, and we we're actually going to one of the best beer bars in the world. <laughs> that seemed perfectly logical to us. Mikel also makes two beers for us at a mass, so whenever we're in the neighborhood, we always stop by. Man, you got all new stuff since the last time, sir. What do you have? What do you have? Like super hoppy IPA wise? Anything? Super hoppy IPA, like um, well. I'm from San Diego. Yeah, I don't have any really, really hoppy ones. I have a couple of double IPAs. <laughs> you need to put that shit in a brown paper bag. Man, man shut the fuck up! I'll fucking carry <laughs> this shit around like this, dog. We had some sausages that I think we all convinced ourselves we were eating a puree of hot dog next to it. So it's essentially a hot dog with everything on it? Puree. puree. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like a giant fucking Slim Jim in this sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> Where's fucking Randy Savage? Where you I believe the word Slim Jim was uh, mentioned once or twice <laughs> while we were there. Sorry, Miko. They were better than Slim Jims, I promise. <laughs> I think someone mentioned kebab. We should go to the fucking kebab place and basket like 30 kebabs. Put the kebab on the ground. Just order 100 kebabs and then just fucking throw them in the canal. <laughs> just fucking throw our hands up and say we're Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, we're Swedish. So we stop kebab stand, get a kebab. My Danish is okay. People make fun of me still. But after a few beers, you get a little bit of liquid courage. So I decided to order in Danish. Which I think went down pretty well. Moi bem, tre falafel durum. Tre falafel durum? Yep. Tre fresh or a new logo? Creme fresh for me. Yeah. Oh, chili? Oh, chili. Yeah, yeah. And creme chili? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Tak, we actually ordered all the falafel, thinking that oh, it'll, it'll probably be easier to eat than uh, shawarma. That was not the case. So we decided to head back out to a mass. At first, but I took a kebab. 
It's like burying my face in a fucking pile of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to figure out right now who the fuck I'm gonna make do guacamole right You're now. You're making guacamole, man. I'm making salsa fresca and I'll make it. sure the guacamole gets made. Good. <laughs> I don't I don't care I don't care how it happens. Uh, you know what? I fucking have my girlfriend make guacamole. <laughs> She's very good at it. So we decided to head back out to a mess. We walk in the back door. There's 15, 20 people sitting out by a raging bonfire. Obviously, it's quite early in the morning now, and people are hungry. So we're in a restaurant. Let's cook some food. So this is the flank steak, marinated from yesterday. Loads of beer, lemon juice, garlic, onions. I decided to divvy out the jobs, as a head chef does. <laughs> Dan, guacamole. Let's play, let's get some like, not this fucking authentic hip hop, man. <laughs> like, like Busta Rhymes, man. I think Magnus tag team on the guacamole there. Salsa fresca, uh, and we just put together some carne asada burritos. In the state of mind we were in, we're being spontaneous and invented Nordic sour cream. I'm also gonna show. I'm also gonna show you how to make Nordic sour cream, aka creme fraiche and drain yogurt. We have yogurt whey on the menu. We season a sauce with. So we have drain yogurt, which is dry as fuck. Don't tell him I put that in there. That's the secret ingredient. Everyone hungry? Sure. Say yes, please. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, chef. Yes. There's so there's so much meat in there. I got very nervous though, actually, when Rosie showed up, pastry chef from Noma, because she is Mexican. My heart was beating. Uh, I actually said, I said, "Are you gonna be here? <laughs> you can't show up if I'm serving carne asada burritos without me knowing." So we made s'mores last night, and I'm pretty sure I've introduced this to more than a few Danes for the first time. We made graham crackers, marshmallows, all from scratch. But the s'mores turned into a feeding frenzy. It was like a carcass with vultures all over the chocolate in the marshmallows, and everyone had it all over their face, and people really didn't care what they looked like. And yeah, marshmallow and chocolate all over everyone's face. It was seagull. There's no story, man. He just showed up. That represents everything. Sigurd. Sigurd. <laughs>